Greetings, gentle sentience, and welcome to my first Convergence of Chris history video. Bum, bum, bum. There will be no rules in this video. I just like to talk about the story behind War Machine. Because in my book, without the story, you're just rolling freaking dice. Who cares? Anyways, this is going to be the history of the Convergence of Chris. And I shall get into it right now. So, without further celebration, let us see. I'm sorry, I'm pulling it up right here, right now. It's escaping me, you little bastard. Okay, now it's open. Thank you. Boom. Refinement towards perfection. History of the convergence of Chris. And it starts with a quote. Ours is a young faith, but Chris is eternal. Her origin is one with the fundamental laws of reality by Magus Aldelphus Agmore, First Oracle, from A Concise Overview of the History of the Maiden of Gears by Enumerator Geovastus, Prime Archivist of the Temple of the Incomplete Axiom. The history of the convergence is inseparable from the history of Chris, a divinity only recently recognized. Although our subtle goddess was unknown until the year 283 AR, she has always existed as an embodiment of universal principles. She waited to reveal herself until we were ready to understand her enigmas, which required a certain degree of mastery over engineering, mathematics, and astronomy. When matter came into being and was put into motion, Chris was there to weigh it, to measure the energy released by the first movement and to enforce the rules governing that process. The acts of creation instigated by the primal gods could proceed only according to the deeper cosmological laws that were central to her being. As civilization began to emerge from barbarity, Chris played an invisible but vital role, bequeathing small insights to certain brilliant minds in order to lead them to intellectual discovery. Those guided by the goddess, while unaware of her, we can call nascent savants. Through them, we perceive her grace, subtlety, and eons-long design. These inspired thinkers worshipped other deities, and at least two of them attended divin attained divinity through metaphysical transformation. Chris did not seek veneration, however, she was content to guide these minds, knowing they would usher civilization into higher thought. <laughs> How's that sound? Next, nascent savants of antiquity. One of the first nascent savants was Sinot, the priest king who revealed the gifts of Minoth. And I don't know how to say this name, to Ichthier, that's spelled I-C-T-H-I-E-R. Though these revelations were attributed to the creator of man, we believe they arose from Sinat's own visionary mind. Chris's guiding hand is evident in his greatest revelations, including the knowledge of cultivating grain from seed to harvest. Even the impulse that led Belcor to join the sage priest Geth in their exodus to spread civilization ultimately served the goddess's designs. To sum up there, they're saying that, uh, <laughs> wow, that even um, basically that Chris uh, was the originator of the followers of Mimnoth that actually those first high priests of Minnoth were secret nascent savants of Chris in reality. Priest King Golviant 
is credited with the founding of Calasia, whose mighty walls still surround Caspia. But this wonder of architecture was designed by the genius Kylamandes, whom the Minites have long forgotten. A leader in the development of mathematics, formal logic, astronomy, and architecture, Kylamandes was unquestionably guided by the Maiden of Gears. By his efforts, the walls and many temples of Caspia endured thousands of years and into the modern era. In addition, he was the first to systematically chart celestial bodies and describe their seasonal cycles. Through his observations, they were limited at the time by what he could perceive with the naked eye. Kayamat Lamandes suffered a tragic death in telling stories to illustrate logical paradoxes. He made the mistake of including Mimnoth as an actor. The Minite priesthood deemed this blasphemous and declared him a heretic, burning him alive despite his long service to the temples. The Minite faith has historically opposed discovery and invention. Though their civilization is a force of order and has achieved many engineering marvels, they have imposed tremendous restraints on new ideas. The only lore fundamentally important to their priests is the true law. Science and higher arts languished under their rule. So arose the greatest savants of ancient times, the twins, Maro and Thamar. Their remarkable path to ascension was part of Chris's plan to shape the evolution of human thought. Proof of her influence appears throughout the Incaridron, particularly in diagrams with hidden ciphers employed by both the twins Maro by both the twins. Morrow was an accomplished student of natural philosophy and a quick study at mathematics, while Thamar evidenced an interest in astronomy and fundamental linguistics, in addition to her more metaphysical pursuits. Both rejected the established order and sought answers through experience, thought, and the application of reason. The spread of their teachings did much to break the conceptual monopoly of the Minite priesthood and facilitate higher thought. Many subsequent ascendants and scions are also recognized as nescient savants, particularly Anginella, Corbin, Nirvana, and Sambert. Each played a part in bringing humanity to awakening. In their wake, numerous thinkers guided by the goddess rose to prominence in Caspia and Thuria. The early Thousand Cities era saw considerable expansion to the systematic thought in these communities, as scholars documented discoveries and participated in open discourse. Among the dozens of influential savants who arose were... <laughs> Glasniag of Cyril, also known as the Sieve of Glasniag, an algorithm used to isolate prime numbers. Telonia of Caspia, who advanced trigonometry as its own study and invented modern numerical notation, and the clouts down enumerators, a group of Thurian mathematicians who performed the breakthrough work on kin, kinet, kin, what? kinematics and defined the laws of velocity and acceleration. There you go. Next will be the clockwork renaissance, but that will be in part two. So basically right now, Chris and the followers of Chris are claiming uh, basically responsibility for all science, all math, and pretty much all knowledge in, uh, <laughs> in, in humanity. And 
anybody who discovered anything was either a secret follower of Chris or uh, they were an actual follower of Chris. But either way, they were a follower of Chris. It's just a matter of whether they knew it or not. So next time, the Clockwork Renaissance. Bye!